Hello everyone. I am Dr. Bert Caritas. You know, I have about 250 videos on my YouTube channel, and most of the videos are science-based, based on articles, and I wanted to have videos with a little more theoretical features. I wanted to get a chalkboard. Let's give more practical information to patients on this chalkboard. Here's why I'm doing this. Not everyone can reach us. I usually try to explain it to the patients who come to me in this way. Of course, the situation of each patient is different. In other words, I do not tell patients with subconscious problems about the physiological disorder. But basically, these are the issues I am talking about, the patients who come to me for examination. We're going to continue this series a little bit, this chalkboard series. Our topic today is erectile dysfunction. Now, according to the latest data, erectile dysfunction is around 325 million people. 90% of them do not go to the doctor. In other words, there are 300 million people around us who have not received any treatment and who are walking around with erectile dysfunction. Why don't they go to the doctor? There are reasons such as shyness, giving up on it, not thinking that there can be a cure for it. But if you pay attention, the number is important. So the subject is also very important. One of the big questions is if you have erectile dysfunction. What is the cause of this erectile dysfunction? Now there can be four causes physiological, psychological, subconscious behavior disorder. These two are called organic in medicine. It can be roughly said that physiological behavior disorder is also physiological. Now, of course, our main topic is physiological. Before moving on to that, let me explain what psychological subconscious behavior disorder means. Now, of course, the biggest psychological problem is depression. Social reasons, that is, your job may be bad, you may be on bad terms with your spouse. All of these are a reason for erectile dysfunction. The performance setback is very important. Distinguishing this is a very important point for me in the examination. How can we distinguish? And that's like this. Now, if there is a really organic, that is, physiological problem, there will always be erectile dysfunction. But if a person says, my hardness is good in masturbation, but my hardness is bad with my partner, my hardness with my partner is good, my hardness is bad with my partner, or my wife is good and bad with my partner. In other words, if it varies according to the situation, place, environment, person, then we call it performance anxiety in the treatment for it is very different. Now the subliminal example is very important, why we don't know some things. For example, let me give an example from one of my own patients. He got married, he has a stiffness problem from the night he got married. However, the same person had no problem having intercourse with other women who had intercourse with the same person during the period he was engaged. But it doesn't get hard the very next day after marriage. The reason is that, of course, these sex therapists can also find themselves under hypnosis and so on. When he was 9 years old, his older sister hit his penis while washing it in a basin. She says that your penis is too small, that nothing will happen when you get married. He records it subconsciously, he gets hypnotized, and this comes out when he gets married. It's hard to remove, it's really hard. The job of sex therapists is difficult in the sense. These two, psychological and subconscious states, are mostly interested in sex therapists. Our topic is physiological and behavioral disorder. Now conduct disorder is very important. What do I mean? Now a man has a sexual marriage, he has a cycle. You may remember this in the video I explained before. That is, sexual desire comes, you have intercourse, you get pleasure, at some point you have an orgasm and you ejaculate. Then there is a start cycle again. For example, when you are 18 years old, it can be 30 seconds, but if you are 50 years old and have been married for 20 years, it can take 4 to 5 days. If you are acting against this cycle, let me give you an example, if you are with your partner 2 times a week, and if you masturbate three times, you are acting against your sexual cycle, and this will definitely and definitely cause problems after a while. We need to do that. Let me give you another example. For example, you have been with your spouse once or twice a week, or you have three partners. You enter into a relationship with each of the three. This is also troublesome. I say it like this. For example, as soon as the mobile phone is 30% charged, you take it from the charge. Then you say that my mobile phone is running low on charge. Let us see 80%, 90%, 100%. It is also very important to distinguish this, because as soon as you distinguish this, as soon as you discover it, it makes no sense. You don't need to do this circulation. We can distinguish them in a very simple anamnesis, that is, when talking about the disease. Now, of course, the main physiological part of the work is important. Reason? Because 90% of the hope of erection can be seen physiologically. Of course, there are definitely psychological problems in those who have physiological problems. Reason? Because there is worry and anxiety. The biggest fear for a man is that he will lose his erection. The man who has lost his erection feels worry and anxiety. 
therefore, it is also affected psychologically. We assume that, but this should go back to normal when we get the hard work. Now there are four analogogens in physiological states, vascular, nervous, hormonal and medicines. Now, vascular causes are the most common in 70%, nervous causes in 5%, hormonal causes in 5%, medicines in 10%. These medicines are very important. Psychotic medicines and things, hypertension medicines are the things that cause this job the most. They are medicines, and if the patient with erectile dysfunction does not have these, it is necessary to ask immediately what medicine he is using. Because it's important. Let me give an example of hormonal causes. For example, our goiter gland, which is located here, our goiter gland working more or less and changing its value can cause erectile dysfunction. By nervous, this is not in the sense that we are angry, we are talking about nervous nerve damage. For example, we see this very often after prostate cancer surgeries. Again, we can see it after back surgery, lower cancer surgeries, chemotherapy, etc. This is important. Now, we said that vascular causes are 70%, it is very important, in fact, almost all of the treatments are aimed at vascular causes. Now, the most common vascular causes are diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. Diabetes is almost four times more common, so if you are a diabetic, you are four times more likely to have erectile dysfunction. If we reveal all of the cardiovascular diseases, blood pressure, cardiovascular problems are peripheral, but if we put the problem of foot veins and end veins, this is five times more and erectile dysfunction can be seen in almost three times more prostate patients and prostate patients in men. All of these can cause vascular problems. Now that's the general thing, that's the reason part, and we're already organizing all of this in our heads when we're talking about it in a quick pace. Now this is very important. I attach great importance to this. This is scoring. You can also do this yourself. Now we call your best hardness 10 out of 10. We call it 0 out of 10 when there is no hardness at all. We call it 5 out of 10. To barely enter the vagina with the help of your partner by holding it in your hand and pushing it up. In other words, if the figure is 5 out of 10, you can have intercourse. We can enter when the hardness degrees are below 5 differently. I do this with every patient. This is quite important. One patient said that my hardness has decreased. It used to be 10 out of 10. It has dropped to 8. Look, medicines are very important. The medicines do not specifically completely end the stiffness. I mean, sometimes I hear it, you know, I started taking depression medication, and from that moment on, I started to have no hardness. So it's very unlikely that there is such a possibility. If you say, it makes sense that 10 out of 10 drop to 8, then there may be medicines. Let me remind you of this. I've done a lot of this lately, and I'm encountering it. Now we have 5 treatment options and treatment. In fact, these are all treatments for veins. Why is vascular treatment essential? Because that's what seems to be the most. Now, briefly, the erection of the penis as I have roughly explained to the disease. Think of your penis like a pool. There are two fountains like this. There are also a lot of water drains at the bottom. Now, normally, when hardening will begin to occur or when hardening will begin to occur gradually, these places are closed gradually, like the water from the fountain, and the pool is filled. What happens after a while? The turnover of the pool is less and less for permanent. That's where all the treatments are effective. That is, to the blood coming from the artery. Currently, there is no effective treatment method for the venous system, that is, the outgoing system. What should we do there? We just need to destroy the system and create a new system and make a prosthesis. Now the first step in treatment is lifestyle change. In other words, a person with erectile dysfunction should Quit smoking, quit alcohol, use diabetes medications regularly, lose weight, do sports, visit his cardiologist and say that I want to use blood pressure medications that do not cause erectile dysfunction. This is very important. Let's say a score of 6 out of 10 can be 7 to 8 even with a correction. 
In other words, even this lifestyle improvement can increase the quality of erection by 20 to 30 percent. For him, this is important. Of course, is it enough on its own? Often it's not enough. Now medicine is very important here. Since 1998, Viagra has been in our lives, the medicine is the first thing we recommend to patients. Reason? Because both diagnosis and treatment If a person is successful when they take medication, you are actually treating them. At the same time, you make a diagnosis. Reason? Because what does the medicine do? It increases the incoming blood. It has no effect on this. Incoming blood is increasing. When the incoming blood increases, the pool fills up. That is, the penis fills, fills with blood, swells and becomes stiff. But if the medicine does not help, things change. Now let's say in a patient that has a needle hardness of 6 out of 10, we gave the medicine and it became 9. Not at all. Then the medicine is beneficial, so there is a problem with this system. In such a case, some patients cannot use medication. Some patients want to use medication, but the medicine has side effects, or some patients are young. We don't want to opt for a lot of medicines when we're young. For this reason, the following three treatments have been changed in the last four to five years. Shockwave, PRP and vacuum. The main treatment here is shock behavior therapy. Let's not forget that. Lately, there have been huge problems related to this. PRP, that is, P-shot treatment and vacuum therapy, contribute to this. How much? About 30% on average. Reason? Because shock wave therapy is generally used here. For example, there may be a spasm in the vessel. There may be a blockage in the capillaries. It has a serious effect both in the direction of incoming vessel dilation and in the formation of small capillaries. We now know this. When PRP vacuum is added, this effect increases even more. 10 sessions to 20 sessions of PRP therapy alone is currently not scientifically accurate. Maybe this will be the case in the future or not, I don't know, but it's not true right now. For this reason, let's be careful to take shockwave, PRP and vacuum triple while receiving treatment in the centers you go to. I said that if the medication helps, I can take these treatments. What happens then? For example, he took medication 6 out of 10. He took medication out of 10. It became 9 to 10. If he gets this treatment, he can be 10 out of 10 on the medicine as well. Or you can catch 7 to 8 without medication. This is very important because you continue without medication. The medicine has a handicap. Today you took 5 milligrams, tomorrow 15 to 20. This will continue to increase and after a while the medicine will become ineffective. When the medicine becomes ineffective, these treatments are off. In other words, if the medicine does not work on a person, shock diving, PVP, vacuum therapy, urging is not very correct. What do we do then? That's when the needle. So we have a test called the Doppler test. We have to do it. What should be our goal in the Doppler test? First of all, the Doppler test is not performed on the patient who is affected by the medicine. Don't forget that. If you are on medication and have hardness, the Doppler test is not suitable for you. The medicine is not effective. Doppler test. What are we looking at? Now we have increased them with medication, but it has not worked. Is there a leak then? So there is a problem with this system. This is the main point of view of the Doppler test. If there is a problem in Doppler, that is, if there is a venous leak, then the job goes to the prosthesis. In other words, there is not much to be done other than to completely renew the system other than the prosthesis. Needle therapy is also a treatment applied together with Doppler for this purpose. Instead of taking medication before intercourse, you inject the penis area 10 minutes before. It is not a very sustainable treatment, but it is a treatment method that should be done in patients who do not want prostheses. I can say that SVF is a root treatment among the people. This is a treatment that can be very useful in the early stages, especially after prostate cancer, where there is nerve damage. It is necessary to find very suitable patients. It is necessary to do it for suitable patients. Patient selection stem cells are also very important here. And no matter what you do, if you cannot get any results with medicines, needles, stem cells, shock waves, PRP, if you cannot get any results, then the person should have prosthetic treatment. If the medicine helps, there is no prosthetic treatment. It may be for social reasons. So I have four jobs, my friend. I want to have intercourse every day. I can't deal with medicines, shock waves, needles or stem cells. 
If he says I want to be prosthetic, this is also the person's own option, which may be a social indication. In short, this is how we explained it. Of course, I don't tell you much about pedestrian disease, that's all, this, 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 and that. In fact, if there is a subconscious problem, I give an example and explain it. If there is a behavioral disorder, I do not tell this part at all. I'm just talking about this place. But in general, this is the part that I tell patients. That's how I tried to explain it. Thank you for listening to me.